Good morning and welcome to worship at Newark United Methodist Church. We are a congregation with open hearts, open minds, and open arms. We welcome and affirm you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, regardless of your race, ethnicity, age, gender identity, sexual orientation, social or economic status, physical and mental ability, or religious affiliation. We are all God's beloved children. Today, we are celebrating God's promise keeping at Pentecost. Pentecost celebrates the gifts of the Spirit poured out on the church, preparing Christ followers to serve him in the world. Many consider today the birthday of the Christian church. It is a day of joy and a day of celebration. As we receive the prelude, you're invited to make notes and greet and pass peace in, in the different chat features. And you're also invited now to light a candle or a flashlight or a lamp in your home to signi signify Christ's personal presence with you in your space as we worship. Let us quiet and center ourselves for worship. Good morning. You're welcome to stand if you are able and join us in our call to worship. Come, Holy Spirit, the wind of God, the breath of life. Come, Holy Spirit, our advocate and our counselor. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Forgiveness, giver of peace. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, enliven us anew. Amen. We join in our opening hymn, As a Fire is Meant for Burning.
as a fire is set for burning with a bright and warming flame. So the church is set for mission, giving glory to God's name, not to preach or greet or customs, but to build a bridge of care. We join hands across the nations, finding neighbors everywhere. We are learners, we are teachers, we are pilgrims on our way. We are seekers, we are givers, we are vessels made of clay. By our gentle, loving action, so that Christ is light, in our noble, listening spirit, we will live to God's delight. As a green bud in the springtime is a sign of life renewed, so may we be signs of oneness in the people of any as our rainbow lights the heavens, when a storm is past and gone, may our lives reflect the radiance of God's love and glorious Please join me in our opening prayer. Let us pray. Sacred breath, move through this room. Unlock a song of praise within your people. Breathe into us your hopes and dreams for a world filled with justice, love, and peace. Amen. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. We have for you, for families with, with young children, materials, the links to which are on our website and also in the email that announces the service, as well as connections from the different Facebook and YouTube pages. And I commend them to you. You may have noticed we're doing things a little differently today as the state of Delaware prepares to open some things back up, churches have some guidelines from the state as well to follow. One of them includes the use of, of, of masks in our worship celebrations so that we're properly distancing and also making sure that we're covering any breath that, that we might have that might cause trouble to one another. And we want to keep one another healthy and, and safe, don't we? And so, you'll notice, we're wearing masks except when we're speaking. This morning's worship service, this morning's scripture reading for the service is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. It's from the New Revised Standard Version. Listen now for the living word of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven where there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them. And a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages. As the Spirit gave them ability. 
Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them hear, heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us in our own language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Spirit of God has been present in the reading and hearing of these words. Thanks be to God. So good morning, boisterous Methodist. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I will pour out my Spirit upon them. That's the good news of this day. What amazing promises. But I get ahead of myself. Last week I spoke of God as a God of promises. We considered some of those promises. This week, as we celebrate the birthday of the Christian church, now would be a great time to make a little noise. Y'all can feel free to do that. Be boisterous. Get your neighbors guessing about what's happening in your world. Get them thinking that you just might be partying a bit early. Get them wondering what's so exciting. That is what happened on the day we celebrate today. Only it was God who stirred things up, who got boisterous. It was the followers of Jesus and people gathered from around the world who were left bewildered, astonished, wondering what was up. So, Jesus' followers were gathered together. They were in town for the Feast of Weeks, a feast that celebrated the 50th day after the Sabbath of which Passover began. They were most likely keeping the tradition of the celebrating the giving of the Law of Moses at Sinai. The actual giving of the Law was a real sound and light show. There was a loud trumpet blast. Smoke covered the mountain. Now, I want you to imagine billowing smoke. If you've ever seen a furnace, an old-time furnace, not the kind we have in our basements or in our closets now, where the steam would, would billow up. The mountain actually trembled that day, and God descended on the mountain in fire. If you want to learn more about the Jewish celebration of Pentecost in Scripture, you can look in the 23rd chapter of Exodus, or the 34th chapter as well, and you can look in the book of Numbers, 
the 28th chapter. It was this festival that the disciples were in town to celebrate. Smoke and fire and trembling earth was on their mind and in their hearts and in their collective memories of the law being given at Mount Sinai. Talk about a theophany that was. Anyway, back to Jesus' day. They, a group of Jesus' faithful disciples, followers, were gathered together when the things got a little wild. As we know, this isn't the first time God's people got their attention. God got the people's attention in a dramatic way. In God's love story, what we call the Bible, there are visitors from strangers. Think of Abraham. There are angels in the night in a river wrestling match. Think of Jacob. There are dreams, Joseph, that great dreamer. There are swarming locusts and hailstorms. Think Pharaoh. There are bushes that burn that aren't consumed. Think Moses. And there are angels bearing news of God's favor, both in what we call the Old Testament and what we call the New Testament. There's love in human form, in other words, incarnate, a babe born. And there's passing through locked doors. And there's breaking of bread, all in moments when those present experienced a living God. Anyway, God does try to get us to pay attention, sometimes in dramatic ways and sometimes not so dramatic so back to the story. The disciples were gathered when suddenly a loud sound like a windstorm. I'm sure you've experienced heavy windstorms in your life. I think of the Shenandoah Valley where I have my home and how the wind can blow through the valley. And when it blows, it roars and it makes the house shake. I envision that kind of wind that broke into where the disciples were that day. Following that wind came fire. Now, I love watching a campfire burn. The different colors of the flame dancing around. The way the flame divides. The fire we hear of here, the flames divide on each person, a tongue on each person. Now, just a little aside as we sit with the image of those first disciples being baptized with the fire of the Holy Spirit. You might know that the two tongues on the, of fire on the United Methodist logo represent the 1968 merger of the Methodist Church and the Evangelical United Brethren Church. You might not know that. Sort of like a confirmation fact. Sort of mourning the fact that we're not able to have our confirmation service this day. Anyway. The 1968 union included the integrating of the church, the coming together of the white and black Methodist churches. Although we are an integrated denomination, we still wrestle with racial and ethnic prejudice. We still wrestle with the harmful impact of systemic racism and xenophobia, the lived out doctrine of white supremacy, which is sin, let there be no doubt about that continues to exist in our society and must be eradicated. No one should be afraid to leave their home because of their skin color. No one should be verbally or physically assaulted because of their ethnic background. The opportunity playing field is not level. I say again, such things are sin. One of my hopes is that in the upcoming year, we might intentionally begin to engage the work of learning how to heal the wounds of all racism and to embrace as a congregation the challenging work of dismantling racism and xenophobia in our society and in our churches. We all have implicit biases that need attending to. We all unknowingly engage in microaggressions. The road to healing and dismantling begins with identifying and resisting these. It involves recognizing that inconvenience 
is not the same as oppression. I have to tell you, I've heard a lot of white privilege express itself in this way. White privilege complains when it's inconvenienced in these challenging times. Please keep in mind that it is the marginalized who are the ones experiencing oppression at this time, not the privileged. Stay tuned for more as we move through the year. Now, you might say, well, that was a real buzz killer. I thought we were celebrating today, right? The gift of the Holy Spirit. That was kind of a little rabbit hole you went down into there, Pastor. What does any of this have to do with a day of celebrating God's Spirit with us? Well, I ask you to remember, we just want to think happy thoughts at times. I own that. I enjoyed doing a drive-by birthday party for an older friend a few weeks ago. It was fun. But we can't spend our time seeking so much of a break in this season of uncertainty that we forget about the needs of our neighbors and about the systems that may make it so though some of us get more than we need and make it so others don't get enough. The followers of Jesus were not the only ones present when all the commotion happened in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. As the story goes, the tongues of fire that rested upon the disciples gave them the ability to speak love so all could understand. It points to God speaks every language and that a complete image of God you know, that God in whom, whose image we are created, that all of humanity is created, a complete image of God requires us all standing on equal ground. There were devout Jews from every nation in Jerusalem that day. God was doing something new. And the whole world was invited, is invited into it. Peter very much understood what was going on in terms of the New Age dawning. Israel was being restored, and this had global implications, had justice implications. Peter would later come to understand that God shows no partiality. Every human being is loved by God and included in God's promise. That everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That the Spirit of the Lord is poured out on all. Where we are born, the color of our skin, the language we speak, our sexuality, our gender identity, our physical abilities, the amount of money in our bank accounts, how old we are, our mental abilities, our status in society, our religious beliefs, none of these matter when it comes to the love of God. God longs for a mutual relationship with all of humanity, every single person. And God speaks their language. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, gives those who follow in the ways of Jesus the ability to speak a language of love in a way that all might hear it. Good news, yes. None of those conditions I listed earlier should matter to us. None should matter as people born of water and spirit. As such people, we are empowered to love as God loves unconditionally. Our true worth, every person's true worth, is tied to God's love for them. Since that love is the same for all of us. As I said before, a complete image of God requires all of us standing on equal footing. Partiality has no place in our discipleship walk. Treating all with respect and working for justice when injustice rears its ugly head, or more likely works silently behind the scenes, does have a place. That respect and that work has a place. Following the loving lead of God, of the Spirit of God, which descended upon us at our baptism. Following the loving lead of that same spirit whose pouring out we celebrate today will never lead us astray. 
the God we hear today, keeping through a quiet and sound and light show, I should say through quite a sound and light show, that God is keeping a promise to provide a comforter, an intercessor, a truth bearer for all of humanity. That same God who added 3,000 to their number that day through spirit-filled proclamation of God's amazing deeds and love, that same God says to us today, don't just sit there, be boisterous. So here's a question, or many of them actually. What does being boisterous mean for you? What will it look like for us as a church going forward? You know, our precursors in the faith here in Newark had a rep for being boisterous. They found a way around any obstacles for them to be able to live into what they believed was their calling and place. Are we living into that reputation? Or have we lost our edge? I would say we have to be careful not to lose our edge in this time. Yes, we should be safe and show care for one another. Wash our hands. Wear that mask. Keep a safe distance when crossing paths with others. We should do all of these things. But that doesn't mean we have to stop finding ways to reach out in love, to bear the Spirit of God, to speak a language of love that all might understand. Adaptation of how we proclaim God's love is required. We're in the middle of it. You'll see that the setup this morning is different than the setup it was for last week based on the new regulations that we have. So yes, we have to adapt. And now, I end my time with you as I began. As we celebrate the Christian church, now would be a good time to make a little noise. Get your neighbors guessing about what's happening in your world, in your home, in your house. Get them thinking that you just might be partying a bit early. Get them wondering what's so exciting. And last but not least, get praying. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Our promise-keeping God will show us the way. Good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our prayer time this morning is a responsive prayer. It's a prayer litany written specifically for, for this season, for Pentecost. Your response is in bold in the bulletin. Let us pray. Wind of the Spirit, Blow through us this day of Pentecost and renew our faith. Reawaken our love for God. Let your flames warm our hearts with trust in Jesus Christ and dare us to do great things in his name. Spirit of power and promise, blow through, through us, us and, and renew, renew our, our faith. faith. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and give us energy to serve you in Christ's church. Open our eyes to recognize needs for ministry and mission, and to learn from this time when we have had to do things differently in worship and pastoral care. Open our hearts to connect with those for whom the time of social distancing has been very difficult. Open our hands to share in the tasks that need doing, and open our lips in prayer and praise. Spirit of power and promise, Blow through us and renew our faith. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and give us understanding for those whose lives seem so different from our own and those facing situations because of the pandemic that we didn't encounter. Understanding for those with whom we've disagreed and for problems and challenges we will now face at home, at work, and in your world as we try to recover from the effects of coronavirus. Spirit of power and promise. Blow through us and renew our faith. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and bring healing 
for all who face pain or illness, discouragement or disappointment, made so much keener because of isolation, healing for all who know sorrow, sadness or grief, and for those who face stress and pressure as they try to rebuild their lives, bring healing to the earth, to places of upheaval, and to ecosystems at risk. Spirit of power and promise, blow through us and renew our faith. Wind of the Spirit, blow through us and bring us the compassion we see in Christ Jesus. Blow, blow through us and refresh us as your faithful followers. Equipped to serve the world you love in his name. As together we say the words he taught us, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just join me in this invitation to personal prayer and offering. The Newark Methodist Preschool has been a meaningful extension of the NUMC ministry for the past 50 years. With a kind and nurturing staff of 20, NMP proudly serves more than 100 families each year. The Methodist Preschool is a school unlike any other. In fact, with its tight-knit community, it's more like a home than a school. Many families attend the preschool not due to its advertising techniques or its amazing location, but rather because of its legendary reputation for being the best that there is. In addition to its remarkable staff, the preschool is home to a highly functioning board consisting of church members, parents, and teachers and staff. From fun runs to snowball dances, this group is full of innovation, creativity, and dedication. As it's done for the past 50 years, the preschool leads with heart and continues to blaze its way into a bright future for its students and their families, its staff and its board, and the greater Newark community it proudly calls home. If you are joining us from another church, we would encourage you to remember your home church and to send your regular offering to it. But as we sing our hymn of prayer and offering, you are invited to sing along, to listen, to pray, to make your offering electronically, and or as is our tradition in Sun Spirit, to take a slip of paper, write out your own personal prayer. If you would like to ask for Pastor Mary Catherine to include your prayer in her personal prayer time, you can also email her at praynewark at gmail.com. Let us offer our gifts to God this day to build up the church, its ministry, and mission wherever the Spirit leads. Let the Son of God enfold you with its spirit and his love. Let him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let him have those things that hold you and his spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you whole. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your lands. Jesus, Oh. 
come and sing the song with gladness as your hearts are filled with all joy. Lift your hands in sweet surrender to his name. Forgive him all your tears and sadness. Give him all your years of pain, and you'll enter into life in Jesus' name. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your lives. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and Let us pray. Spirit of grace and power, bless the gifts we bring today so that they accomplish surprising things in Jesus' name. We offer ourselves too so that our lives may proclaim the good news with your grace and power. Amen. Please join us in our closing hymn, Spirit of God. No matter where we go, 
hold us together, so held in your hands, born on your wings. Spirit of God, bright flame, send us in your holy name, the power to heal, to share, your love everywhere. We can do not fail or fall, we for defeat at all, held in your heart, born on your wings. Spirit of God in all, we gladly in our hands that sing the power of your wings. Born of your grace, we rise, all of you in our eyes, held in your hands. Our promise-keeping God has blown us over with the power from above this day. Be renewed. Be enlivened. Be boisterous in sharing God's unconditional love in all inspiring ways through the power of God's Spirit with all who cross your path. Amen. <laughs>